Welcome to EC Elimu Learning Simplified and welcome to this lesson. In the previous lesson, we discussed the relationship between the focal length and the radius of curvature, which we summarized mathematically as radius of curvature is equal to 2 times a focal length. Now, in this lesson, we are going to discuss ray diagrams, and here you will need this relationship for you to form images on curved surfaces. My name is Albert. I hope you will enjoy the lesson. By the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to draw four important rays which are used in construction of ray diagrams. So ray diagrams are used to show and explain how images are formed by curved mirrors and the characteristics of these images which are formed. Like in this case, we have been drawing concave mirrors, concave mirrors like this. Then we silver the back part. Then we draw the principal axis with our focal point and the center of curvature, and this is the pole. But in now in ray diagrams, we are not going to draw that. We are going to draw a straight line with a curve like that of a concave at the top, a very small curve. Now this curve is the one which will represent this a concave. Then of course at the middle here we will have a, a principal axis. This is the principal axis which will have the pole there and then F is in front of the mirror and C is in front of the mirror. So that is for a concave mirror. Then for a convex, for a convex mirror we have been drawing them like this. You have a curve like this one, then you have, you silver it behind. Then you have a line which will run through the pole to the principal, uh, to the focal point, then to the center of curvature. In this case, they are behind the reflecting surface. Now, in 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 ray diagrams, we are not going to draw this. We are going to draw them as a single line with a curve like that one of a convex mirror, silver behind. Then this one is the one which will represent this a convex. Then now here you will have a principal uh, axis which will have F behind the mirror and C behind the mirror and of course the focal point or the pole there. Then in this case if you want to place an object in front of this mirror then you will place it here as a single line with an arrow then it should be 90 degrees to the principal axis. Also here if you want to place the object in front of the mirror then it should be 90 degrees to the principal axis and it should have an arrow to show the tip of that image. So as you can see in both cases in the first for concave, the object and the C and F are in front of the reflecting surface. But for convex, only the, the object is in front of the mirror, then F and C are behind the mirror. It's very important to not start. So when constructing images formed by curved surfaces, we consider four very important rays. And the first ray is a ray which is close and parallel to the principal axis. We called it a paraxial ray. So in this case, this ray will pass through the principal focus. It will pass through F for a concave mirror, or it will appear to have emerged from F, that is the principal focus for a convex mirror because uh, the F for convex mirror is virtual. So in this case, we are going to consider the two cases here. And I want us to identify the first mirror here. This is the first mirror. This is the second mirror. What type of mirror is this first mirror? We look at this curve. The reflecting surface is curving inward or to the front. So in this case, this is a concave mirror. So if it's a concave mirror, then now we will set the position of our F, that is the focal point. Focal point for convective mirror is in front. So we will have a concave mirror, that is the focal point. Then now we said the focal point will be a half the radius of curvature. So in this case, if we want C, we will measure equal distance to the, this end here. Then we will have our C. So according to this first ray for a concave mirror, a ray which is close and parallel to the principal axis will be reflected through F. So if you have a ray like that, remember a ray, it is a line, straight line with an arrow, then it will be reflected through F like that. So in this case, 
that is how the first ray states that is for a concave mirror then if we have a convex mirror then we are going to set our f and our c so in this case we identify it's a convex because the reflecting surface is curving outward so this is a convex so in this case we will set our f and c for convex mirror f and c are behind so you will measure a distance from the pole to some point here you will call it f then you measure equal distance the other end you call it c so in this case if we have a ray which is cross and parallel to the principal axis then in this case it will be a ray like this one here cross and parallel to the principal axis in this case this ray will be reflected but after it's being reflected, it will appear as if it was coming from point F. So in this case, it will appear to have come from point F, but in real sense, it will not come from point F, only that it's being reflected by this ray. So if I can draw this one, then it will appear to have come from that point, then in real sense the ray touched the mirror and then it got reflected away like that so in this case for a convex mirror this ray will appear to have emerged from point f but for a concave mirror it will pass through point f so that is the first ray that is very important so the second ray is a ray through the principal focus of a concave mirror or appearing to be directed to the principal focus for of a convex mirror it's reflected parallel to the principal axis so the first diagram we have here is for a concave because of this shape of that uh, curve so in this case we will just draw very fast that is the focal point then this is a uh, point c then for the second diagram this one is a convex then we will have our F behind the mirror and then C behind the mirror. Now, if we have this this low states, if a ray is directed through point F, a ray which passes through the focal point, like in this case, if you have a ray from below here, and then it's passing through the focal point like that, then this ray will be reflected parallel to the principal axis. After reflection, it will be parallel to the principal axis like that so in this case if a ray is directed or it's coming in through point f then it will get reflected parallel to the principal axis then for the second diagram here if you have a ray which appears to be directed to the principal uh, point or principal focus like this one here appearing to be directed to the principal let me draw it properly so if you have a ray like this one and it's being it appears like it's being directed to the principal uh, focus like that such a way that it's being directed to that point then after reflection it will be reflected parallel it will be reflected parallel to the principal axis so in the first diagram, the ray is actually directed through F. Then it gets reflected the parallel to the principal uh, axis. But for the second diagram, the ray is assumed all it seems to be directed through F, but it's not passing through F. After reflection, it will be parallel to the principal axis. So this is the axis here, and this is the axis. So this ray was originating from this point to the through F get reflected and this one it was coming from this point as appearing that it is directed to f it will get reflected parallel to the principal axis so the third ray is a ray through the center of curvature for a concave mirror or appearing to pass through the center of curvature for a convex mirror it's reflected along its own path so very quickly if we can identify the first mirror this one is a concave because the reflecting surface bends inward this one is a convex because the reflecting surface bends outside then if this the first one is a concave then the focal point is in front then the center of curvature is in front then if the second one is a convex focal point is behind the mirror 
then the center of curvature is also behind the mirror. And now the ray that we are talking about is a ray through C, then it will get reflected along its own path. So in this case, if we have a ray from down here, and this ray is being reflected or directed through the center of curvature, now this ray will go like that. So it will move like that when it hits the mirror. It will go, it hits the mirror, then it gets reflected back on its own path. Then now if we have the same ray which appear to have been directed to the center of curvature, like in this case, then if you have a ray from that point like that, then behind the mirror, remember, it's virtual. Virtual rays are drawn as dots. That's a very important thing that a student should note. So behind the mirror here, it's not a complete line. So if you have a ray which was seems to be directed through point C, when it hits the mirror, it gets reflected back on its own path. So that is another important ray that you must know as a student. So the fourth ray is a ray at an angle to the principal axis and incident at the pole is reflected in such a way the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. So in this case, we can identify the first mirror as a concave, concave because the reflecting surface bends inward. And we can identify this one as a convex, convex because the reflecting surface bends outside. And in this case, if this first one is a concave, then the focal point is in front of the mirror, this, the center of coverage is in front of the mirror. Then if the second one is a convex, then the focal point is behind the mirror, the center of coverage is behind the mirror. So identifying the mirror will help you locate the point of uh, focal point and center of coverage. So in this case, the ray that we are talking about is a ray which is at an angle to the principal axis and it's incident at the pole, like this ray here. So if you have a ray like this one here, incident at the pole, and it forms an angle I with the principal axis, then it's going to be reflected in such a way that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. So this will be the reflection, and this will be the angle of reflection. So also, if you have um, such a ray, for a convex mirror, then this ray, if it comes incident to the pole, then it will get reflected following the laws of reflection like that. So in this case, it will not go behind the mirror. In this case, it will be reflected in such a way that I is equal to R, and it will obey the second, the first, the second law of reflection, which states that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. So this ray, you will need it very much in construction of ray diagrams and images in curved surfaces. So that marks the end of our lesson today. In the next lesson, we will discuss how to draw images on a concave mirror at the different positions of the object in front of the mirror.